Hi, my name is Alejo Castanos. And I'm Tyler Martin. And today we'll be talking about our work on graph convolutional networks or Swahili news classification. So although Swahili is one of the most widely spoken languages in the world, it remains underrepresented in natural language processing research. Uh, this underrepresentation uh, manifests itself in a couple of ways. Um, one of these being that there's a significant um, shortage of annotated data sets and uh, accessible benchmarks. And this makes it quite difficult for new researchers to get into the field and build on existing work. Furthermore, techniques are often developed in high resource languages in publications, and there remains a degree of uncertainty as to how well these transfer into a low resource context. And finally, the lack of purpose-built tools and libraries for these languages often results in making the work uh, more difficult to get done. In this work we're talking about today, um, we're using Zenodo Swahili news classification data set, where each document is labeled into one of six news categories. And in the figure in the bottom here, you can see how these uh, categories are distributed um, in our train validation test set. And it's key to note the um, class imbalance um, over all three subsets. So in addition to looking at the case for Swahili news classification, we're particularly interested in the semi-supervised context. And this is because uh, in low resource natural language processing, uh, you're often faced with label sparsity. So if you can develop a method or use one that uh, leverages uh, the semi-supervised techniques, you can make use of your quality labels, even though there might be few, at the same time as making use of your large unlabeled data sets. So the work really uh, points to three key contributions. The first being a set of accessible benchmarks for the semi-supervised Swahili news classification task. We then uh, propose the first application of graph neural networks on an African language. And finally, uh, we present a memory efficient variant of the text graph convolutional neural network model, which was uh, developed on English, which is a high resource language. So let's first take you through our baselines. And we have in this uh, work presented three traditional NLP benchmarks. The first being the term frequency or counts model. Uh, the second being an uh, a normalized version of this, uh, i.e. the TF-IDF uh, model. And finally, we also present on the paragraph vector distributed bag of words model, uh, which has been popularized in the Dr. Beck paper. So the best way to think about our baseline uh, kind of pipeline is to um, look at the figure in the bottom of our slide where we have our high level overview. Um, if you look from the left hand side, you see we take the corpus and pass it through one of uh, these three traditional NLP models, which form a document processing stage. Uh, this allows us to extract a feature set uh, for each one of these documents, which we can then pass through a logistic regression layer to get our uh, categorization prediction. Now to move on to where we bring graph neural networks into this picture. Um, and we do this uh, by viewing a corpus as having an implicit graph structure where both semantic and syntactic relationships can be represented in a graph. Um, and these relationships exist both within a document and between documents in our corpus. And we're particularly interested in viewing um, the corpus in this slide because graph neural networks are really good at semi-supervised learning. Um, they manage to achieve great results in this area by aggregating information from a neighborhood of nodes. And we show this in more detail on the figure on the bottom, where for a reference node VI, we show how we generate um, a hidden state representation, HI, by aggregating information along the one hop links to VI, which are shaded in red. And that allows us to not only incorporate information from VI, but also from each one of those blue nodes in the one hop neighborhood. Now to present uh, the experimental results and how this plays out in practice, I'll hand over to Tyler. 
Okay, now to move on to some of the um, experimental results. Uh, this table shows the test accuracy and macro F1 score for the document classification task with the mean and standard, uh, standard deviation for each model shown. And for this task, only 20% of the training labels are used to train each model, making this a semi-supervised task. And because of the class imbalance that Aleko mentioned, we consider the F1 score to be the more important metric. Um, and uh, looking at the actual uh, numbers, we can see that the uh, counts model and TF-IDF perform remarkably well, given their simplicity. And then towards the bottom of the table, we can see that the text GCN variants perform the best out of all of the models. Um, and the text to VEC variant makes use of word to VEC and doc to VEC embeddings to represent the word and document input features, respectively. And this uh, text to VEC variant um, also has a reduced memory footprint, which makes it computationally more attractive and faster to train. So now instead of using 20% uh, of the training labels, we consider the effect of using even less labels with increments of one, five, 10, and 20% for the same document classification task. And in the plot, you can see how the reduction in the number uh, of labels affects each model's performance. Um, and so we can see that the text GCN models consistently outperform the traditional techniques and most noticeably as the proportion of uh, labels is reduced uh, to one and 5%. And the counts model, which previously performed relatively well, has a noticeable degradation in performance as the number of training labels is decreased. So in conclusion, um, in our work, we implement two versions of a text GCN uh, for a sem semi-supervised Swahili news classification task. And we find that these models uh, outperform a variety of traditional methods, especially when only a small number of labels are used. And our work demonstrates the implicit graph nature of a set of documents, which is exploited by the text GCN model and is an interesting direction uh, for document classification tasks. So for future work, um, alternative graph structures could be considered. For example, a document to document similarity feature could be added to the graph. And additionally, uh, inductive GNN methods could be considered in which previously unseen nodes can be classified in testing. Here are some important papers that our work referenced. And finally, you can find us on GitHub with this QR code. Thank you for listening.